This is a video about my experience overclocking a 5950X. I'm interested in what are reasonable expectations to have for a static overclock. Have I pushed my chip as far as I can? Or is there something I don't know about that I should be doing to get better performance? I'm not an experienced overclocker. I'm not making this video to tell people that this is the best they can get. I'm doing this because I didn't feel like I could find enough information to know as someone who is unexperienced whether I've sort of gotten as much as I can get out of the chip. In the video, I'll explain you know what my current settings are and why I consider myself temperature limited. My use case, just to say why I care about the multi-threaded performance and don't care at all about single threaded performance. I'm not a gamer and if I don't say that I already know I get a ton of comments telling me just to do PBO. I'll also overview my cooling setup. Maybe I have high temperatures because I've used a few cheap components. I'll also overview a couple things that I've used to sort of compare myself against on the internet and that will sort of show why I'm a bit confused about whether I really have pushed the chip as far as I can. The ultimate point being is to give the open question of, can I do better? Can I have higher clock speeds, lower temperatures, or maybe I've gone too far and what I currently am doing is something that will degrade my chip. Constructive feedback is very welcome. That's why I'm making this video. That's what I'm looking for. Maybe what I'll say is I don't consider something like this constructive feedback. It's also simply not true that I've overclocked to stock. As I get into the details, I'll say that in my workload when I'm running PBO, I don't go above 4.4 gigahertz with PBO. So a static overclock is certainly the way to go for me. If you're interested as I go through and you see the CPU usage, CCD0 is in blue and CCD1 in pink. This is the actual overclock that I have going on right now. Uh, what you just saw, the 4.575 gigahertz overclock, was before I got per CCX working on my CPU and I sent, I had to contact Gigabyte tech support essentially to get the per CCX working, at, at least within Linux, which is where I'm at. I'm not going to be able to give you Cinebench numbers or anything like that. The current overclock that I have going is a 4.65 gigahertz on CCD0 and 4.575 gigahertz on CCD1. Why am I temperature limited? Well, look, I'm sitting at 82 degrees Celsius here. From what I've understood online, I shouldn't be going over 85. And what happens in my workload is I'm running some code, a simulation for school, I'm a grad student, that uses 25 threads. And what will happen is I'll see it on here, maybe 20 of the 25 threads will finish around the same time. And when that happens, I'll get a temperature spike that's two to three degrees Celsius higher than what I've been at in steady state. I don't know if that's due to poor transient response or if it's just the voltage going up because of the load line calibration settings where if there's less current draw or something, there's a voltage spike, or, or maybe it's something completely different that causes those temperature spikes as I finish a workload. It, and it's not like a one-off. What I'll say is, so my use case is running these simulations. I'm not a gamer. I would imagine that the stuff I'm saying is relevant to video editor editors or whoever is also interested in some multi-threaded workload for the chip. 
it's not the case that it's a short one off. In the current job, I'd say I get those temperature spikes maybe once every hour and a half. There's some other jobs where it's more frequent, just depending on the sort of simulation that I'm running. But in all told, when I go through all of the parameters that I have to for this model, I am running code that's going to be going for one and a half to two weeks. That's what's going on with this current job. It, earlier, I, I ran a job that only went for 40 hours approximately but either way it's just whenever I finish one simulation it's usually just a day or two before I have a new simulation that I'm running so it's fairly constant that I'm putting the CPU under a decent amount of stress you know 25 threads that are just going at you know 100% CPU usage and I don't want to push into unsafe temperatures. I don't want to do anything that's going to be risking degrading the CPU. And maybe I'm already in there. Maybe I'm already doing something that's risky, in which case I want feedback to tell me to stop. <laughs> it's an expensive chip, and I do not have the funds to replace it. Where are we at here? So my use case, I think I've said as much as I need to for that. In terms of my cooling setup, sorry, I've done a million takes. I suddenly have a ton, a ton of sympathy for Buildzoid, and you know it seems like he's rambling, but it's so difficult to fit all of the important information into a concise video. Here's my water block. It's a Bisky. The pump is D5. I think it was a pump res combo from Barrow. I have two 360 radiators in here. The top is just push. The side is push pull for the bottom two and just push for the top. I couldn't do push pull because of the tubing for the water. I also have the three fans here. This is intake down here, intake on the side, exhaust on the top, and these are two 80 millimeter fans exhausting in the back of the case as well. So that seems pretty robust. So I would be inclined to think that, hey, I'm doing as much as I can for cooling, only, you know, that is a relatively cheap water block. The radiators were maybe 20 bucks a piece on Amazon. They're unbranded, but a reviewer suggested that they're the freeze mod reds. Certainly when I got them, they had the red caps in here, like these freeze mod copper reds. So I think that's what I'm working with. Certainly they're 28 millimeter thick reds. They're not super dense fins. So maybe that's a weak point in the system but like what you'll see is this is not an isolated case of people reporting on reddit or whatever where they'll say they can do 4.7 gigahertz all core that it's stable they'll report you know maybe 75 c as their max temp and that's like way beyond <laughs> what i'm doing I have no idea is on this particular post, you know, I asked some questions and they were just never responded to. And so I felt kind of, you know, stupid with some of this feedback and felt like I was just really missing something. But then recently Kit Guru Tech did a test of, you know, I don't know, 10-ish different coolers on a 5950X. And this was with a four point, just 4.45 gigahertz all-core, 1.312 volts set. So that's going to be higher voltage than me. I don't know if I skipped over it, but I'm at 1.287 set, low load line calibration 
on a gigabyte f B550. Um, so anyway, maybe this is comparable because it has the higher voltage, maybe not. But for them, then, this is delta T over ambient, so they're about 79C in with a 360 AIO. So that made me feel a little bit more confident, like maybe this is just a golden chip over here, and if you're working with a bronze chip, this is the sort of temperature situation that you can expect, you know, running 82C when you're at 25 threads saturated at 100% utilization. But maybe it's the cheap components in the cooling loop, or maybe I'm not doing something in the BIOS that I should be doing to lower my temperatures. Maybe there's some weird thing with VRM switching frequency that I should look into. So I don't know. On one hand, I look at something like this and I'm thinking, hey, I'm doing great. On the other hand, I you know, will look at these Reddit posts and think I'm doing horrible with this overclock. So I have no idea. I think I've covered all of the sort of information that you might want. This is my idle temp. I sit around 33 degrees Celsius. And I'd say my loop takes, I think, about an hour really to completely heat soak. When I first start the job, it will be sitting around 75 C. And it's only after quite a while that it gets up there. But since this is running for potentially two weeks here, I know that you know these steady state temperatures are what I can expect. And I don't want to be pushing into unsafe temperatures. I'm not looking to have a bunch of electro migration. Other things I can say is I think Gamers Nexus in their review mentioned that they were a little bit temperature limited potentially I think but they're a quick and dirty overclock where they're running 4.7 gigahertz but it's 1.34 volts set and they're only looking for Cinebench stability which for all I know is much easier to get you know this code has you know, Numba JIT compiler going on in it, tons of NumPy in it, so there's probably a bit of AVX going on in the background. I doubt that it's as stressful a workload as some of the Prime 95 stress testing, but this is stable. I know that I can run code that's heavily multi-threaded for a solid week, I think, is the longest stint I've done so far, and not have crashes. I can be watching YouTube videos and whatnot using those extra threads that I have. I hope that's sort of helpful expectation setting and also enough information for those who do have the experience to give me some constructive feedback on this. That's what I'm really looking for. And I wish there was more information. The Kit Guru Tech video, that's the only scenario that I've seen of folks testing, you know, a static overclock with a bunch of different coolers and doing something that gives some sort of expectation for the sort of temperatures that you can expect in this sort of scenario here. Now I know that's just one chip and I'm also a sample size of one. So I'd you know, love feedback if you don't have anything constructive to say about the bio settings or whatever, I'd love feedback just in terms of if you do have a 5950X, what are your temperatures if you have experienced, if you have experimented with some static overclocking. If there are details that I've left out, let me know, because I can fill those in. Otherwise, thanks for listening this far, and have a good night.